Hey all. so this video is going to go through a plugin I built to generate a set of delay suite macros. Uh, this plugin's actually been up in the Dropbox folder uh, since last year, but I haven't really gotten around to making a video for it. I was waiting to make a more efficient version, which is the one you're going to see here. Um, I'm still looking to add some more functionality to it in the future, but we're going to go ahead and post this for those of you looking for this function. Uh, so what this plugin does is create a set of macros that allow you to change the time and direction of a delay sweep across your rig uh, applied to a specific set of sequences. So that when you go a sequ uh, go a queue, sorry, in one of those sequences, um, it happens from one side to the other of your rig or from inside to out. Uh, you can be used to just make a change from one queue to the next a bit more interesting, uh, especially with dimmer or color positions, uh, rather than just moving as a block across the entire rig. Uh, or implemented in a more complex setup, like this color chase layout I built for a client, where it was combined with a rate master and fade times and applied to a sequence set to timed goes. Uh, this does not work on an actual blue executor chaser, like an actual chaser. Um, because those, it turns out, ignore individual delay times, uh, or if there's a way to make it respond to them, I have not figured it out. Uh, so, there's that. Alright, for those of you who prefer just digging through the instructions, uh, there is a readme file included in the plugin, or in the folder. Uh, so if you just want to go and skim through that, take care of it, reference back if you need anything. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this video is only going to cover the installation and the usage of the plugin. Uh, for information on the updater plugin that allows you to update with a new rig, new set of fixtures, uh, that will be linked at the end of this video. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring in our plugin. Alright. So inside of here, so to get inside of the plugin, let's right click on it or edit tap. Uh, we have a user config section at the very top. Uh, this will be for any settings that aren't likely to change very frequently. So we cut our installation time down and chances for fat fingering down. Uh, so the first thing is our delay time list. Uh, so in between these two square brackets, we'll put any uh, delay time we're going to want, any sweep time, uh, separated by commas. Uh, I've just started with zero, make sure you include a zero so that you can turn the sweeps off. And, and then I start with a quarter second and work my way up to four. Use whatever whatever set of times works for you. Um, chaser wings. This is, as the name implies, uh, more specifically for using it in a chaser type setting. Uh, if you have the same time moving from center out as you do, let's say, from left to right, it's going to look very crunched uh, in comparison because basically the amount of space between each new step is cut in half. So this cuts the time of the uh, wings uh, moving from in, in to out or out to in in half so that the size of the wave is the same. Uh, next thing is sequence start and sequence finish. These, this is the range of sequences affected by the plugin. Uh, if you're not entirely sure about this now, just leave whatever defaults. Uh, you can always change it later with the execution plugin that will be installed in the process. Preset type information. So right now I've got three in here. Let's say, let's get rid of dimmer. Uh, so the same as with your delay time list, any preset types that you want, uh, you put the number of them uh, as noted in the corner of each type, uh, separated by a comma. If you only want it to be for one type, you can just put one type in there, which a lot of the time, I mean, that's mostly what I use, really. Um, include video. So if you put a type 0 in here, which means all, it's still going to ignore video unless you specifically ask for it, because one, how often are you going to want to sweep video stuff, and two, it takes up a lot of space. So I went ahead and made it default to not including it unless the user specifically wants it. Uh, create updater. Another one set for just true or false, no quotes around it, uh, which is the same as Chaser Wings, by the way. Don't put any quotes on that. Um, this will create the updater plugin uh, so that you can create, so you can take your existing layout and change your times uh, 
or sorry, change your groups with the same times and not have to recreate your layout every time you move to a different rig. I would just default this to true. The extra plugin doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And the last set is your storage information. Uh, your starting macro, your starting plugin, your starting all type preset, your zero point presets. Um, if you put a number here for a space that's already occupied, the plugin will find the next available space and move to that. So don't worry about accidentally overriding anything. It's it's not going to do that. So with all that, you can hit save. Doesn't really matter because it's always saving anyways. Kind of a pointless button. Um, and with that set, now we have to create our groups. So it's going to ask for our groups from downstage to upstage so that it knows which way to move for those particular sweeps. Uh, so to do that, let's go ahead and delete these and start over. Uh, easiest way, I think, is to use a layout, especially if you have more than one fixture type on a truss or if your numbers aren't in a direct order from left to right. So I'm going to start with my downstage truss. Uh, and the cool thing about layouts is that it will select your fixtures in the order that you lasso them. So I'm in highlight mode right now, and we can see after sweeping uh, left to right on it that it picked them in order. Now that is the same as the fixture numbers, so it doesn't really show you the effect there. But when we clear out, and let's move to our trusses, so you can see I have two different fixture types, two old different sets of numbers. As I move from left to right, capture them and I cycle through them you can see that it selected them in order which is a lot easier than trying to type in uh, fixture 201 plus 311 plus so on and so forth. If I could get the set to work here, there we go. Uh, so we will store that, clear out, same thing here, and check through, make sure our order selection is correct, store here, and the last I'm going to do is my floor row. I'm just going to kind of ignore the mythos for now. So we'll sweep left to right there. Store here. And I just remembered execute for this is not working, so excuse me for a moment. Let's just store that here for now. Cool. Sorry for that. Alright. So now with our row set, and if you were smart you would label these, but I'm just going to kind of speed through it. Let's clear out again. Alright, so we have our rows, we have our user config, and let's get started. So we click it, it gives you a confirmation screen to make sure that you have actually set what you want to set so you don't accidentally go through it, and realize, oh shit, I didn't actually check it. So let's hit OK. And the first thing it asks for is our downstage group. So in this case, that is group 145, 146, 7, 48, and then we'll hit enter again with nothing input, and it builds all of it, and it's done. Uh, so it gives you a little pop-up screen that tells you where your first macro is, that way you don't have to go digging trying to remember what you typed. So 801, 801 is our first macro. So let's go over here, oops, that's not going to help me. Alright, 801, and there it is. Uh, we have our blue ones are the times, and the green macros are our directions. So we're going to put macros 801 through 814 into our layout. Let's go in here, and we're going to assign macro 80. Oops, that's not working. 801 through 814 here. Let's zoom out. Make it look kind of like something real quick. Rectangle, one column. Let's make it breathe. Same with this. That's not what I wanted at all. I don't know how it got unselected. And you can arrange it however you want, but anyways. So we have our macros here. So if we take a look, so I'm going to go ahead and let's say sweep two seconds from left to right, and let's just say no, no fade time right now. So if we look on our rig as we go this, uh, we can see that it's doing a sweep two seconds. We'll change direction and make it all blue. See it's going that direction. Go from inside to outside, go amber. Looks pretty orange in 3D. Uh, and then we can apply our fade times and make it look 
a little nicer and prettier that way. It's you know not ugly. So, anyways, uh, say one second up uh, towards upstage. All white. All cyan. You get the idea. Towards downstage. A lot of these vertical ones look a little more cool when you have more rows to apply them to. Obviously. Um, so that's it. That's that's pretty much how you execute that. Now, if you want to go and change your settings, so if we go back to the slot, so let's say, so we look in our user config here, let's switch back to view, you can see, um, we can see that we told it to store it plugin 20 first. So let's go check plugin 20, and right here we have a plugin that was generated called Execute Color Sweeps. I use the preset type 4, so it goes with the first item in your list. If I had position and color, it would go with position because uh, that was earlier in the list. You could put 4 and 2 instead if you want colors to show up. It doesn't... whatever you want to see. Anyways, so we right-click on this, edit-click on it, whichever way, uh, and we can see the numbers that we entered earlier are inserted here. Uh, if we want to change the range of sequences affected by this sweep, uh, first off, make sure you go back and set your time to zero so you're not stuck with a sweep in there that you didn't want. Uh, and then come here and change your uh, range of sequences that will be affected. So that's it for the installation process. Uh, check out the link video for a walkthrough of the included updater plugin should you want to uh, clone over a file that is using this. And uh, be sure to check in on the Dropbox folder every now and then, see if there are any plugins I might have added that I haven't had time to make a video for yet. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.